everyone. Welcome back to How Inez Rolls. As you can see, we're doing another grilling video today. So let's get started. So what are we grilling today, Paul? We're grilling chicken breasts that have been marinated. Marinated. So he'll go through the step-by-step -step on how to do that. And I'll be making German fried potatoes. Now, it's probably not something totally made in Germany, but there's a reason why I am doing this. It is dedicated to Christine Agamir for the $50 super chat from Saturday. And she's from? Uh, Germany. Germany. So, Christine, let us know if this is something that you make back at home and if how I can improve it, too. Yeah, so. Now, is she from Germany or does she just live there? I have no idea. So let us know that too. <laughs> so let's get started. Um, Paul's gonna show you the step-by-step -step on how he put together the seasoning, the marinade, and how he's going to cook. So we have a few pounds of chicken breasts here, and uh, they're just the frozen chicken breasts from Costco. No, not from Costco. If somebody does have a larger chicken breast, what could they do to kind of get that ready for the grill? You can uh, use a meat tenderizer and smack it thin, kind of like you would with a, a cube steak, or even uh, if you're making um, chicken parmesan, you're gonna bread it. You can uh, you can butterfly the chicken. So you can butterfly the chicken, which is just cutting it widthwise in half. The lengthwise, and then uh, just folding it up. Yeah. Or open, folding it, it open. And then opening it up, and uh, th that's one way you can do it to make that's one thing you can do to make it cook more quickly. Mm -hmm. And you can't cook it through on a grill slow and low. You just wanna make sure you get that inside temperature at 165, 170, just mm -hmm. to make sure you cook out any bacteria that's in there. So what is in this marinade? This marinade is olive oil, lemon juice, uh, minced garlic, and other seasonings just seasonings that they would prefer yeah something you know a little salty a little sugary but it's it's all good all right let's go get started so first off i with making the potatoes i had to fry some bacon so i'm going to link the recipe it's actually a little bit of a video i believe so it'll be awesome to follow and it just said to do like four um bacon strips but i'm doing eight because i'm doubling the amount of potatoes you get me. So I'm just going to let these um, cool down and then I'll just chop them up. But this bacon grease, that's what we're going to use to fry potatoes. It's going to have oodles of flavor. So I'm just kind of keeping it warm and we're just gonna crisp them up. And I'm just gonna cut the potatoes on a cube. So this recipe called for red potatoes but the yellow gold ones are what I have, so I don't think it really matters too much, but just making sure they are going to be about cube size. You know, about, let me show you about my thumb. There you go. So enough to easily fry. So now these are ready to uh, put into the oil. So I'm just going to try, well, I'm gonna get it a little bit hotter than this, but what I'm gonna be putting on this is just some pepper and I am gonna get some other ingredients ready. Let's get this going. I did just make some broth. So I don't buy usually broth from the store. I will just use bouillon cubes and make my own broth. So much cheaper it's more cost effective for sure so i'm just going to add some pepper here and give it a flip let me know in the comments if you use bacon grease to cook with so i don't and i i really should since i know it would give awesome flavor but i don't but i don't really make tons of bacon either so i'm loving that i'm getting to reuse this oil too so this is smelling already delicious because, come on, bacon, delicious. But I'm so curious as if this is something they really do make in Germany. So we'll, I'll take you through this process a little bit more. But did you know that my mother was born in Germany? 
She was a military child or baby and was born in Wiesbaden, Germany. So, fun fact, we're continuing with this cooking process. So my potatoes are mostly fried, so I'm just going to um, put them to the side for right now. I'm gonna unplug this because I thought we could go check out what the chicken is doing out on the grill. This is the meat thermometer. Um, you can get them on Amazon or yeah, at any place. Anywhere. Yeah. This one's nice. You open it up and just hit the on button. And they do say on the side here like what the thought, um, what the temperature should be. So that's very important. You can see outside right now it's 97 degrees. <laughs> yeah, it's I think a little hotter than that. Yeah. <laughs> it's climbing. And we're in the shade. <laughs> so. And so Paul also has these probes yeah. which is really nice i think that we've shown them in some other videos yeah this one's really cool you just turn it on and it too has it electronically on the side but the next one we'll get you is the one that you can see it on your phone <gasps> yeah, that'd, that'd be awesome a bluetooth probe that sticks in the meat and then tells you yes how far along your meat is cooking now everybody doesn't have a traeger i, I understand that so even a regular grill you just want to make sure it's at a low setting, correct? Uh, or start it, off hot, then go low? Depends on what you're cooking. On, so we're talking chicken. On chicken, you might want to cook it around uh, 350 for... 350. For... Um, so preheat uh, your grill. Yeah, 20 minutes or so. Just check it, you know, check it every now and then. You know, on, on a Traeger, it's indirect heat, so it's a lot harder to burn. But on something like this where you have the flames coming up right underneath it. Yeah, you got to watch it. If there's fat on, on your meat, whether it be pork, chicken, beef, and that fat drips down, it's going to cause flare-ups, and that flare-up's going to heat up the grill a lot. Like, I've come out, and there have been, it's been like a five, fire. 500 degrees. <laughs> I'm, oh, crap, I'm pulling the meat off really quick. So you want to be... You want to be mindful of what you're cooking. Okay, well, let's see what this chicken is looking like. I'm going to come over here to the side. That way I don't get smoked. <laughs> so I think we're getting close to done. Yeah, but then remember, those chickens were not so thick, and that's why they're cooking a lot faster. So I'm going to grab a thicker piece. That looks so good already. Yeah, let's see where we're at. We want to be, we want to be about 165, 170. Maybe even a little bit hotter. Well, if it gets to 165, I notice it goes really high, really fast. Yes, we're so already we're really... at one, crushing 170 right now. Okay, so maybe a few more minutes at that. Yeah, maybe maybe five more minutes at the most. And the other way to tell if you don't have a thermometer is on chicken. Once the juices run clear, you should be good. So running clear juices. Yeah, so when it's not... If you if you poke the chicken accident or if you if you pierce the chicken and it's coming out kind of white and thick, it's not ready. Okay. Well I better get going on those potatoes then. Ooh, it is hot outside and my cheeks are all flushed. So what I'm gonna be doing basically is a roux. So I am going to be using instead of flour, I'm going to be using cornstarch because it is gluten free. So and it will still thicken up nicely. So what I um, it, what I suggest is uh, going half. So if you're asking for like a flour of a cup of flour, then you're going to do a half a cup of flour or a cornstarch, excuse me. So I am going to get going on this and we're also going to be adding a tiny bit of apple cider. So in the original recipe, it states like three tablespoons is what I would be putting. So I'm just going to do one <laughs> because, you know, I, I know my family best. So I'm going to bring it closer and we'll get this through going yep we're gonna get some of those renderings it's gonna be delicious if i can hurry up and get stuff in here so the fat's gonna work like butter if you've made a roux before i'm gonna kind of get this all to soak up and get some of those renderings Oh goodness, this is going to be, I mean, who doesn't love bacon, right? <laughs> I'm sure there are people out there that don't actually. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of the vinegar. Now remember, I'm just doing a little bit because I know my family. 
But by all means, if you love a tangy sauce, I would totally do that. So I barely even put a third of what it even called for. And I'm also going to add some onions. Now the recipe called for green, but I'm just gonna do a little dehydrated. And so we'll let this thicken up a little bit. So I've been putting it in and it's thickened up nicely, but because of the cornstarch, it hasn't blended in as easily as flour. So I would say if you are not going gluten-free, then stick to the flour. It's so much easier, but it has thickened up and I'm gonna now add these yummy potatoes to it. Those are nicely cooked through anyway, so I'm just going to kind of mix these potatoes through, kind of a little bit like poutine-like. So if you don't know what poutine is, it's pretty much french fries with gravy on it, and it is delicious, and it also has like cheese curds or cheese on top. It's delicious. Let me know in the comments if you have a mean recipe, which... I would imagine it's just brown gravy, right? Okay, so let me know in the comments if you've had poutine. It is delicious. I've made it for um, Super Bowls and the people that came were like, gravy on french fries. And I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and dish up. And Paul's got the chicken um, off of the grill and I'll show you that as well. But this is smelling really, really good, you guys. So I would definitely, probably, as long as everybody loves this, make it again. So I'll show you the chicken now. So the chicken's done. It's come up to full temperature and we took it off the grill, let it sit for probably about 15 minutes or so. That way the juices settle and when you cut it, if you cut it too early, it'll dry out quickly. And, uh, We'll just slice it up and put it on the plates and we'll show you what it looks like. One more thing that Paul wanted me to remind everybody was that when you're marinating, it shouldn't be more than a couple hours because then the meat could get mushy. So we're starting to plate up. It smells delicious and I can't wait to eat. All right, here we go. All right, Ezra's having breakfast because he's just like that. But you can see my chairs are in transition. I'm painting them black. What do you think? Oh wait, wrong person. <laughs> Go ahead, Paul, let's see. Do you think that was good? Those German fried potatoes, right? I may have sampled the chicken when I was cutting. Yeah. That may be good, really good. <laughs> was quite the tasty meal. So good. I'm sure Paul's taking some for lunch tomorrow. I totally am. <laughs> it was really good. You know, Jonas has been at camp this week and he totally missed out because this was a very yummy meal and I will be making it again and I'll even pour, put more apple cider vinegar because I think it would really enhance the flavor. So thanks Christine for giving us the idea to be creative this week. Mm -hmm. And we dedicate this video to you. So thanks so much. Also, I don't know if it's German or not, but the marinade that I used, I found while I was looking up German chicken recipes. So, so maybe lemon. It is, maybe it's not. It was good. It does have a like a stronger lemon undertone, so. And the potatoes really complemented the chicken really well. That was so good. So let us know in the comments if that is something you think you would eat or even try. And let us know some of your favorite grilling recipes that you've been doing this summer. Stick around. You just never know. But we'll be rolling out next. Bye everyone.